Welcome to MacGyver's Workshop, where you never know what we're going to be working on next. If you're not too careful, you just might learn something. Hi there, and welcome to MacGyver's Workshop, where you never know what we're going to be working on next, and if you're not too careful, you just might learn something. So we're working on our new tractor project and we are just about ready to split the tractor. Uh, we are actually going to technically split this tractor into three pieces because you've got the back section which is the bell housing, transmission and you know rear differential and then you have the engine in the middle and then you have you know the front suspension and the wheels and all that for the front part. So we're going to take the front part off and then that will allow us to remove the engine and we'll leave the back part sitting on the stands. But I'll move the camera around and we'll see that a little more here coming up. So now we're going to separate this front section here off of the engine block. Uh, the tractor is basically in uh, a bunch of sections that are all bolted together. You know, we've got this front section here that bolts to the front of the engine block. Then you have the engine block, which is actually a structural member of the tractor. And then, then you have your bell housing and transmission here. And then you have your rear section back here, which is where your differential and power takeoff and all that sort of thing is. Now, uh, we're going to split the tractor right here because we want to get the engine out to where we can take it apart and overhaul it. But to do that first, we have to take our, our front section off. Now, I've got this little rolling platform here. I know it looks kind of wonky because uh, it sat outside and got rained on when it had the, uh, the donor truck cab sitting on it. So it's kind of sway back now, but it's still sturdy and it, it'll hold the weight of this. And I've got all this disconnected now. Got my power steering lines here. And all we need to do now is just roll this whole assembly back and it'll separate from the engine block. And there's basically one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen bolts uh, holding it all together, and then uh, of course the various lines and things like that. So. Okay, now we got our, got our front end separated. Now I'm just gonna start taking as much extraneous stuff off of here as, as uh, I can. No point in having all the extra weight on there. That engine block will be heavy enough, but fortunately, since this is a small diesel uh, by diesel engine standards, it's only uh, like 239 cubic inches. Um, you know, it'll still fit on my thousand pound capacity engine stand without any danger or risk or anything like that. So now if it was a bigger tractor, yeah, we'd have to come up with something different, but, but, uh, so that's what we're going to do. So I'm just going to go on here and, and, uh, start taking all this stuff off here as we go. And, and then we'll get our engine hoist over here and hook up to it and, Take the engine block off.
We've reached our second major milestone here, and uh, that's getting the engine out. So we'll work on uh, getting this thing put on an engine stand, and uh, I think I'm going to have me a uh, I'm going to have me like a victory beer or something, and uh, we'll be back in a minute. All right. So now we got we got our motor out of the tractor and we've got it on the engine stand. Now, as I mentioned before, uh, this is a uh, this is a very small diesel engine. It's a small four cylinder, so uh, it will mount safely onto a heavy duty engine stand. Now this one's rated at a thousand pound capacity. Um, we're not anywhere near that with this block. Now I'm not going to fully dress it on the stand. Uh, we'll get it, you know, uh, we'll get it reasonably together and then we can assemble it the rest of the way on the tractor. So no worries there. But right now we got to get this thing torn down and find out, you know, the extent of the damage. We know this cylinder liner is completely hosed. Uh, not so sure about this first cylinder liner. Of course, the overall kit's going to come with all four, but looks like this one's sticking up a little more than these guys are, so I'm not sure what's going on here. Um, when I had the engine in frame, I was able to get this rod cap loose on the number four and push that piston up out of the way, and I thought that that's what was locking the motor up. But uh, to my surprise, it wasn't because once I got this connecting rod free of the crank, it's still frozen. Now that could be because, uh, I mean, this tractor had to have been sitting for quite some time. And uh, there's some stuff here and there's, there's lots of little clues, um, like in the timing cover here. You know, there's uh, a lot of rust and scale built up and from where this gasket was, and it's only in one spot. So uh, that tells me, um, like I said, the guy had torn this engine down in frame and then he just kind of buttoned it back together, you know, I guess when they determined that they didn't want to mess with it or the owner didn't want to mess with it and the mechanic said screw it and just kind of halfway buttoned it back together and you know for this much rust and scale to build up here just on this one spot on this timing gear um, I mean this thing had to have been sitting for for at least a few years so uh, but that's not the end of the world you know we're uh, you know we can we can get this thing apart and get it cleaned up and uh, and get it sorted as I had said before, these, these motors and these big tractors are just inherently serviceable. So short of, you know, the thing just completely grenading and busting into a million pieces, uh, there's really not anything you can't hardly fix on one of these. So, so now I'm gonna get the, the front timing set off of this thing. And to do that, um, one of the first things I'm going to have to do is get the camshaft out and really the easiest way to do that is to just spin the motor over upside down, let all the tappets, you know, fall out of the way and then we can slide the cam out. So we're going to get started on that. That's all that diesel fuel that the guy put in there to, uh, you know, since the engine was seized, he, uh, you know, was pouring diesel fuel down in there to act as a penetrating oil. But when in reality, I think what happened is, is that the uh, O-ring seal on this, this sleeve back here leaked and we got rust 
a bunch of rust back here and corrosion. So I'm guessing that's where our, where our problem is going to be. So we'll let all these tappets flop down out of the way. And then we can slide our camshaft out. And we'll tap them down there. Very gently. We just want them to where we can get the camshaft out. Shouldn't take too much effort. Now these two back ones, uh, I don't know. Eh, not too bad. All right. So now the tappets are out of the way, so they're not going to they're not going to interfere with the they're not going to interfere with the camshaft as it's coming out of the block. The problem we're going to have is is there's going to be a thrust plate there, and we're not going to be able to get to the two bolts to hold that thrust plate. So we're going to have to try and take uh, we're going to have to try and get this timing gear out of here. And to do that, we're probably going to have to figure out. How to get all this other stuff out. So let me consult with the service Manuel and then I'll get back to you here. Thank <laughs> you. 